Hi, gang. Long time no see. I miss you guys. If you'll take a look at my email address, it's on the screen. As we begin this adventure, I want you to know that is the number one way for you to contact me. If you have problems at all, or if you're just not sure what to do, that's what to do. So we're going to begin studying something new. We're going to begin looking at soil, and this is going to be the first video of a three-part series. So here we go. I think you all have seen soil, you've played in soil, you've had it on you. But the number one place I think I want to begin is with some sort of scientific definition of what soil is. And the best way I can find it would be a loose mixture of bits of rocks and minerals, air, water, and organic matter. So really soil has five different components or five different parts. And we're going to take, in, we're going to take a look at each one of those parts and try to break down exactly what they are and where they come from. So when we look at a typical soil sample, now this is not every soil, we find that the biggest percentage of soil is actually minerals. You can see on our pie chart here that that's 46%, nearly 50% of all that would be in any soil sample. You can see that a, a, an astounding amount really of a typical soil sample, sample is going to be air, which is like some empty space that would be occupied by air. And of course, soil also holds water. We can see a tiny bit is something called organic matter. Organic matter is really just decayed bits of plants and animals, but we'll talk more about that later. Now, at this point, I need you to find your science notebook, pause the video, and I actually want you to draw this chart in your science notebook. Go ahead. So when we look at soil, one of the most important things that I want to share with you is that soil doesn't just appear. Soil is formed from rock. And we call the rock that a soil is formed from the parent rock. It takes thousands of years for soil to form. So soil is a resource, it's, it's irreplaceable. And if we look in, the, in this image, we can see in, in this, the window number one where it says soil begins to form, it shows that it's just starting with rock and we can see some, what looks like rain dropping down on it. And we see cracks in that rock. That's gonna turn out to be important. And as we move our way across from left to right on this image, we see that several places, uh, the rock gets broken down, smaller and smaller and smaller. We need to look a little bit more at this process that breaks down rock and helps to form soil. This is a process some of you have undoubtedly learned about, probably the last time was in fourth grade. This is a process called weathering. And weathering is just a natural process that breaks rock down into smaller and smaller pieces. In other words, it breaks it. Now, there are several ways. It's not just water that breaks down rock. Uh, we can also have ice break it down, wind, plants, and animals. All of these are what we call weathering agents, which means they're all things that can break rock into smaller pieces. They're all things that cause weathering. Once we have a rock that has been broken down into really small bits, uh, these small bits of weathered rock, we just call sediment. Now you may have seen a word like this before from the rock cycle. Uh, and so sedimentary rocks are actually rocks that are made from the smaller bits of weathered rock. And so, you know, that's a term you've probably ran into before. So small bits of weathered rock, we just call those sediment. Now, once we have broken that rock, we have another process where that sediment is actually carried to a new location. You guys, have, if you look at the image, you can see here that um, we have a really, really, really muddy river that is absolutely picked up a bunch of sediment. Um, it has a bunch of mud and silt and sand that is being carried by the current. And that's one example of erosion of sediment being carried to a new location. We can also have erosion by the wind. Uh, this is a picture of a sandstorm. And the wind just picks up loose particles that have been broken down through weathering and it moves them to a new location. So we have 
weathering that breaks it, we have erosion that moves it, and we have something called deposition. Deposition is just a process where sediment is dropped in a new location. So if we look at the picture on the left, we can see that this is a stream bank, and we can see a big sandbar. And this sandbar is actually a really good example that we might see locally of deposition. Uh, this is a, the picture on the right is a picture of a river delta. This is also another example of, of de deposition. And we can see this river delta has many, many, many channels and just an immense amount of sediment that has been dropped in this one place. So weathering breaks it, erosion moves it, deposition drops it. Those three processes turn out to be really important as we, as we begin thinking about soil and how it's formed. I did want to look at this picture of deposition by the wind as well. So if you've ever ran into sand dunes, uh, sand dunes are a, are a prime example of the wind moving or depositing uh, sediment. So weathering and erosion and deposition, these are things that shape our surface. And so if we look at some very, very popular national parks, and in this example, we can see the Colorado River, which is down in the Grand Canyon, and we can see the steep sides of the canyon. These steep sides were actually carved by the river, by the, by the moving water, and the sediment that resulted was then carried away by the Colorado River. So weathering and erosion, those are very, very powerful agents when it comes to shaping landforms and the surface of the earth. One thing that I, I do want to make sure that we go back and revisit is when we think about weathering is that weathering is dramatically uh, increased or decreased by the climate of a particular place. So weathering doesn't happen at the same rate everywhere. Now, weathering is a slow process. Uh, weathering a piece of rock with water can take thousands and thousands of years, sometimes millions. But when we do look at weathering and we compare one place to another, we find that weathering happens fastest in warm, wet climates like rainforests. So if weathering is something that breaks rock apart and a big part of soil is made of bits of rocks and minerals. It would, be, it would be something worth noting that places like rainforests that have warm, wet climates, we're gonna find not only faster weathering, but faster soil formation. Now, on the other hand, we would find the exact opposite happens in cold, dry climates. Climates like tundras, if we look at a tundra biome, it's gonna be very cold and dry there. And you're gonna find that uh, soil would form very, very slowly because rock there is weathered very, very slowly. So we have those two different rates of weathering. Uh, we have fast and we have slow, and both of those are dependent on climate. There are several other factors that also can uh, make a big difference in the rate of weathering, but these are the primary two that I want you thinking about. I want you to take just a moment now, and I want you to go back to your science notebook, and I want, I want you to use this video to go back and write some definitions for these words. I want you to look for definitions for soil. I want you to look for a definition for weathering. I want you to look for the definition of erosion. And I want you to look for a definition of deposition. You can use my words, or you can even feel free to try to put those into your own words. Either one of those will be fine. So. I'm going to pause the video for a minute and give you time to go back and do that. All right, guys, here's the last thing that I want you to do for today. And I'm looking for you to try to do a small lab. And so to do that, I want you to collect what we're going to call a soil sample. Uh, to collect a soil sample, I've got some instructions here on the screen. And you're going to need to take a look at these before you try to go get your soil sample. But essentially, you'll only need two things. You're going to need a sandwich or a quart size Ziploc baggie and then something to dig with. Now, um, please don't. You can use an old fork or a spoon. If you have a, a spade or a tiny shovel, either one of those will work, work as well. 
But please don't grab your mother's good silverware or don't grab uh, something from your grandmother's cupboard uh, that she wouldn't approve of. So you're going to need to get some materials together. And really, you just need a baggie and you need something to dig with. It doesn't have to be fancy. Of course, before you go outside and do this, you're going to have to ask an adult where would be a good place to dig. Please don't begin uh, digging in the middle of your lawn for a soil sample uh, or maybe even in the middle of your garden. I want you to ask permission and I want you to make sure you tell an adult where you're going to get your soil sample at. Of course, I want you to be safe. So always check it out with an adult before you uh, go and decide that you're going to collect your soil sample. When you're choosing the place to collect your soil sample from, I want you to think of a safe spot that has undisturbed soil. Now, undisturbed means that humans haven't done anything to it. They haven't moved it around with a bulldozer. They haven't tillered it with a tiller. They haven't planted flowers in it and then put um, maybe uh, potting soil or peat moss or some other types of uh, things you can buy from the store into the soil to make it better. I want you to look for soil that is as undisturbed as you can get. Uh, some places might be in a field, um, at the edge of a garden, maybe even at the edge of a forest. But see where you can find the best undisturbed soil you can. I understand that some of you will not be able to get undisturbed soil, and that's okay. One thing I want you to be very careful to do is not to collect man-made soil or artificial soil. I want you to things like think. I want you to think about things that you could buy at Lowe's or Walmart. Things like potting soil. You definitely do not want to use this as you collect your soil sample. We're going to be using this soil sample to do a another lab, which will will be completely ruined if you have artificial soil. So you've chosen your spot. You've got permission. You have your materials, and now it's time to actually take your sample. Uh, when you're getting ready to take your sample, I just want you to use your hands and I want you to scrape back all those leaves and twigs and grass and all that surface litter and all the things that are on the surface above where the soil is. We're really trying to get down to where we see um, in our area that nice reddish brown soil. So we want to scrape as much of that other stuff out of the way as we can and we may even have to you know, remove some remove some weeds and some roots and things like that to get ready to take our sample. After you've got the surface clear, it's time to go ahead and dig up your sample. Uh, I don't want you to dig down any deeper than a hand's length, which is about six inches. But I do need you to make sure that you've got that small, small Ziploc baggie. Uh, you want it to be almost nearly full. Uh, we're going to need quite a bit of soil to do the lab that I want you to do. Now, as you're putting that soil in the bag and you're taking your sample, you got to get rid of all the things that don't belong there. I want you to get rid of rocks, any roots you can see, any leaves that maybe you missed as you were going. I want you to take those out. I also want you to take apart any clumps or any, we call them clods sometimes in soil. Um, but what goes into your baggie should be really nice, loose, reddish brown soil. Okay, so after you've got a nice clean soil sample, I want you to seal your Ziploc baggie and I want you to take it home and I want you to use it. And we'll talk more about that in a later video. Well, guys, once again, I want to remind you if you need my help, I want you to check and check in on me with my email. I want you guys to know that uh, this is going to be a little strange at first, but I think we'll all get good at it pretty quickly. I miss you guys. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay positive. Okay, goodbye.